Hi, I'm Simon, welcome to my shed. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, bicycle hub dynamos, about charge controllers and batteries, and then we're going to have a look at the Egaro D2, and I'll show you how that all connects up and how that works. Now, <coughs> it's my opinion that a good way to use a hub dynamo is to charge up a power bank or a battery pack that you can then charge your other devices off that when you need to. So things don't all run out of charge at the same time, do they? But if you've got a charged up battery ready to charge them, then off you go. So <clears throat> the way you charge batteries is by pushing current the wrong way through them. And it kind of well, you know, fills them up. And then when they discharge, it all comes out again. Um, most normal batteries in phones and cameras and stuff are direct current, DC. And they've got a positive and a negative. And by pushing it the wrong way through, you charge them up. Um, now the thing about a hub dynamo is that they spill out alternating current which goes backwards forwards backwards forwards now connecting that to a battery is not going to do anything it's not going to charge it up certainly so you need to put that current through a charge controller which will make sure the right amount of voltage goes through the battery um, and that it's all direct current as well and that's what the Agaro D2 does so let's have a look at it um, let's just get that out of there. Right. Look at that, isn't that cute? No, it might look tiny there, I've got fairly big hands. Um, now, how does this work? Right. On your hub dynamo, you will have two connections. And that's where the electricity comes out, obviously. And you need to connect it to these two pins here. Now these look pretty flimsy don't they but actually there's a fair bit of strength to them. So that's where the electricity comes in. You get a wire with the pack that connects one end you have to do a little bit of well it's a bit of a faff to connect it on and maybe do some soldering but then you wind the cable up until it comes out to wherever you're going to keep this thing connect the other two onto there and that's it connected and then this is where the electricity comes out. This is a USB-C, which is quite a new, well, it's not that new, it's fairly new. I think it's going to be the new standard. And then whatever you're going to charge is going to connect connecting into that thing there. Um, one of the things they say is that you don't want to get bending these wires. So whatever, however you connect that needs to be held there quite securely. Now, one of the challenges with this um, is you need to try and find a way of connecting it up such that you're not putting pressure on the connections here and bending them and breaking them. And this is where I'm quite proud of myself for my little invention. Um, it fits rather nicely into an old film canister. Now I've got some of these because I'm a film photographer amongst other things. Um, so I've taken it one step further as well. Now I have, let me just show you what I've done here. I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing is, you get these little um, rubber inserts with the kit, which can go either side of it, like that. And then, when I shove that into this case, oh, it's snug as can be. Right, so that will stop that rattling around. Now, this is the clever bit. What I did here was, I have, um, if you're gonna focus now, I bought, a little USB-C to USB-A adapter. I've also got, these are some wires I had from when I'm playing with my Arduino. Um, and I cut a hole in the top of the canister, put it all together, and then I filled this up with hot glue, which is brilliant stuff for doing anything electrical. And that holds it solid. And then what you can do as long as I don't mess it up. Actually, I'll do it outside of the, the box and then push it in. If you can see, that's all lined up now where it was hot, hot glued together. Push all that in there. That goes in there. That goes in there. And now, I've got a... It's not really rigid at the moment, but it won't be. But then as soon as I slip it back in here with these little rubber inserts to hold it. Oh, 
Oh, look at this. Look at that. Solid as a rock. Now what I do is I just drop that into my bar bag. Um, connect anything, the power pack that I want to charge on there. Those two will connect to the cable that's come up from the dynamo and that'll flop around. And it doesn't matter if you pull these, it's not going to hurt anything in there. This can get bumped around all day long and the thing inside stays safe. So that's the way I've done it. Um, you may well have another idea, but um, yeah, that's it. One thing to remember is that it doesn't matter which way these cables connect. As I said earlier, that current coming up from the dynamo is AC. So there's two, the socket coming up from the dynamo has got two holes. They can go into either one, so don't sweat it. And the same obviously applies when you're connecting it at the dynamo end. There's nothing, um, you know, it doesn't matter which way around they go. The reason I've got it in this sort of detachable thing that can come in and out and on off the bike is because I didn't fancy attaching this to the bike permanently because it, it's expensive and I, and they're not terribly waterproof either. So you need a way of, um, I don't know, that's the way I chose. Put that in the bar bag, connect it up, and then when you finish, well, when you finish it right or whatever, unconnect it, take that home, or take it away with a bar bag and it's not going to get nicked or damaged. So that's it for batteries and charge controllers and hub dynamos and the Egaro D2. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and thanks for watching.